since I've got everyone's attention. <laughs> Let the record reflect we've reconvened with all members present. Uh, Councilman Landrigan is excused. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have a motion for the executive minutes of October 11th, 2017. Second. Is it discussed? All in favor? Aye. 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 A motion for the regular minutes of October 11th, 2017. Second. Any discussion on corrections or changes? All in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome all. It's a big crowd that just came to show for the uh, Rodan. I'm sure that's the reason everyone's here. <laughs> Just a few, uh, one um, housekeeping item, the work agenda item and the introduction of ordinance related to the protecting borough trees. The uh, shade tree uh, management board, board wants a little more work on that. We expect that to come back at the next meeting. So that is pulled from the agenda and will not be part of the uh, council discussion nor the first uh, comment period. It's been a uh, busy, uh, well, it's only been a week and a half since our last meeting, since we had met on a Wednesday. But uh, last weekend, the Garden Club of Madison was hosting a regional flower show. It was two years in the making, a tremendous amount of planning and execution to make it happen. The, um, the volunteers of the uh, club really put their heart and soul into it. And I want to also thank our uh, DPW crew that came in and cleared this room of every chair, cleared, cleared the courtroom of every chair moved uh, furniture around to make it a uh, great show and is so important. We, we know, as we've been reading the paper recently, this building is such a treasure and any way we can get people in here to appreciate that treasure is uh, tremendous. And talking about that, there is the buzz about the Rodan back in the corner. So those who have been coming in council meetings have seen that sculpture back there. And just uh, to be clear, it never was lost. You knew it was always there. Um, there was even in a 1942 document uh, outlining the gift of the artwork in this room that went to the Hartley Dodge trustees. It mentioned the bust of Napoleon by Rodin. But what kind of was lost is the fact that what it truly meant to have Rodin in this building. And it certainly was lost to the art world, and that is truly the art world as um, some of the articles have been picked up in England uh, and France about the Rodin and people wondering where was the, boast, the bust of Napoleon all these years. And we do know that just because a document in 1942 said it was Rodin, that is not what it justifies it to be declared a Rodin. So it was the work of a Drew graduate student, another sign of how valuable a university in our town is, uh, Mallory Mortarello, sorry, um, that her persistence to verify it was Rodin created the excitement. She called the uh, Rodin Museum in uh, France and they said, there's actually, we'll send you an application process because I guess everyone calls every other day to say they have Rodin. And her persistence verified it. And as I said, it's a reminder of the special place we have in Hartley Dodge. Just look around this, this room, look around the hallways as you go out, all the historic pictures. The um, trustees have done a great job of maintaining this. And that's also a reminder that it's been suggested, why don't we sell them the uh, Rodin to help uh, Madison projects? It belongs to the trustees and Mrs. Dodge gave it to Madison to be appreciated by the residents forever. So the Rodin will take a little vacation. We'll spend more time out of uh, Madison than I ever did in a uh, year in Philadelphia at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. And so we'll be looking forward to Napoleon coming back home in the uh, future. And this past weekend, I want to thank President, Council President Carmelo Vitali for pinch hitting for me while I was out of town. We had two celebrations. A thrift shop celebrated their 75th anniversary. And so Carmela presented a proclamation there. And then she headed off to the adult school for celebrating their 80th anniversary. So 
We do have a crowd here. I'm going to come down and do a proclamation. <coughs> Council table, so Maureen Byrne, please step up. Yeah. Also, Anne Marie Davies, please come forward. <laughs> and oh, at, Osprey, come up. Yeah, I, I, I had a feeling you. Yeah, I, I actually, I'm. I, yeah. I meant to check ahead of time because I had a feeling you were also a uh, field hockey parent. And how about current and uh, past coaches in the audience? Come and join Anne Marie up here. I'll invite the players to have a leave, but no one in the audience. But I'll ask all the players to come up here also because it's so important. Uh, this recognition, 600 career wins. I, mm -hmm. Just to put this in, is this working? Yeah. Is, it's working out there. But can you hear me out there? No, it's not. It's not working. It's blinking. I do have a phone, so I was wondering if I lost my voice. Yes. Do you want to use this, Mayor? Yeah. The battery is going on this one. All right. The old-fashioned way. So one of the things I did to just get a perspective on 600 career wins is just look up two legendary coaches. This is not field hockey, but NFL. But you think about Tom Landry and Don Shula. Two longtime coaches, Cowboys and Dolphins respectively, Shula was also with the Colts. If you put their success together, two legendary coaches together, they come short of Anne Marie Davies. <laughs> In fact, 16 games short, so they'd have to go an undefeated season to, to, just to catch up. So here's our recognition. Whereas a lifelong resident of Madison and herself an alumna of Madison High School, class of 74. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anne Marie Davis has coached the Madison High School field hockey team for 36 years. And whereas this year's field hockey team is ranked sixth. We had to rewrite the proclamation because when it was drafted, it was seventh. <laughs> but we're moving up in the NJ.com top 20 and their victory over Morristown Beard on September, on Saturday, September 23rd, made Coach Davies the second coach in state history, second coach in state history, and the 13th coach nationally to achieve a 600 win milestone. That is incredible. Yeah, that's Whereas the team won the 22nd Morris County Tournament Championship for the Madison High School on Tuesday, October 17th, and will now play for the state championship yet again. And whereas, respect for coaching style, Coach Davies credits her assistant coaching staff. We have a small representation right here. I lost track of where I was, sorry. <laughs> And the players for, and we have a lot of players out in the audience, for 66 championships, one under, one under her tenure. And whereas, career accomplishments at Madison High School for Coach Davies include 24 conference titles, 22 Morris County tournament titles, 15 state sectional titles, and five New Jersey group championships. And whereas, over the years, thousands of young women have enjoyed playing the game of field hockey thanks to the commitment and dedication of Coach Davies. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, the Mayor of Borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby recognize and congratulate Madison High School field hockey varsity coach Amory Davies on her 600th career milestone. And 
Emery's going to say a few words, but if we can, as she's getting ready to stop, call all the players. Come on up here. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yep, kind of fill in here. We'll, Come on, girl. Come on up. Don't be bashful. <laughs> really, that's good. <laughs> you can kind of like get in here, squat down, so I don't know, whatever. Just let her do her. Okay, while they're still, is this on? Is this on? I think it's on. Red? It's on. Oh, it's on. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's on? It's, 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 it's on? Yeah. Okay. Wow. I just want to thank uh, the Borough Council for honoring me tonight. But um, there's three different thank yous I want to give out. Um, to number one would be to the fans, my family, and all the parents that have endured all our seasons throughout the years. Uh, my second thank you goes to my coaches, my past and present. Um, my present co coaching staff is fabulous. Um, we have Victoria Sacco, who is a former player of mine, came back from um, Brown to coach. She's my assistant. And then we have Courtney Davis, who also played for me and went to uh, Cabrizi and played uh, field hockey and lacrosse there. And we also have an alumni within Clarissa Sacco as a parent as of one of my alumni, also came back to coach the freshman team. One of our coaches is um, not feeling well. She, she isn't here. Britt Blankmeyer, but she is uh, from Marstown. She did come over to our side and is now a Madison Dodger. <laughs> the third thank you goes to all, the, all our players from the past and these kids standing in front of you. Um, they got me my 600 win and I can't be more than gratified to them. I also have players, some couple of players might be in the audience that are here, Maeve, uh, my cousin Debbie, Katie Senna. I mean, it's just awesome. We have our trainer, Meg, who uh, endures all our injuries and, and our whining and whatnot and takes care of us year in and year out. Um, it's, it, it's a blessing to be part of this program and this culture. Um, I just want to say, and this is the deal I'm going to make with the Madison Borough, we're now on our journey to the state title. We're going to bring it back to Madison. Yeah. Okay, let's yeah, do our chair. We got a little. Right. We got a little chair. We want to leave it with. We are a team. 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 We Thank you for coming. Back to business, but that's a, a <laughs> tremendous moment and uh, something that certainly makes, uh, makes us very proud here in Madison. 
On to reports from committees. Here we go. We Public Works and Engineering. <clears throat> Ms. Vitali. Okay. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, the, Manix, uh, the Mechanic Department of uh, Department of Public Works has been very busy um, servicing and repairing police vehicles. Um, they're, get, uh, they're still working on the grass cutting equipment, and uh, they always repair DPW vehicles. Uh, they're installing um, and servicing all the leaf blowers because that's what we're going to be needing very shortly. Um, they removed a bucket and, and install a claw on a loader for the leaves to get that ready and repaired the, the brakes on the leaf mach, uh, machine, which, thank God, I wouldn't want that to be coming in my house. Anyway, the Parks Department, they're still cutting and weeding and trimming mm -hmm. the bushes in, in the various parks areas. There are some recreational fields that still need to be lined um, for appropriate uh, games. Um, we have uh, four ball in, in Madison. They installed new swings at uh, Dodge Field Park, and they repaired the sprinkler system at HEM. Um, as, as the um, mayor announced, they helped with the flower show set up and the cleanup. They did a great job. It was a beautiful evening here. Um, and also helped with Bottle Hill Day uh, set up and clean up. Um, if anybody walked downtown the next day, you wouldn't know that there were 20,000 people here on Saturday. Um, Rose Department has been installing street signs. They're replacing sidewalks and curbing on, on Community Place, and they are mm -hmm. filling potholes yet. They also help with the flower show set up and clean up, and of course with Bottle Hill Day. Um, and they've been helping the water department with repairs. Um, as far as the sewer department is concerned, they have daily operations and maintenance of, of the lift stations. Pump replacement at Candlewood, lift station completed. Uh, four basin rebills from wear and decay. Some pump discharge realignment on Rachel lift station due to rust and rot failure. So that was replaced. Um, they do lots of miscellaneous uh, markouts for demolitions, uh, PSE and G, and the water uh, department as well. Um, one of the other things I want to talk about that the mayor has mentioned is on Saturday morning, uh, Maureen Byrne and I uh, went over to um, the 75th anniversary of um, the independent thrift shop. Um, they were just absolutely thrilled that we were there and brought them a proclamation. Um, and they're a wonderful organization. And um, there, there were people there that um, had probably volunteered, you know, in the last 70 years. So um, it was a really very, very nice uh, occasion. Pilot J.C. from the State Assembly joined us with their resolution as well. And then off, like the mayor said, we went to the adult school and presented the borough uh, and presented a proclamation there. At that time, they presented to me, to the borough, um, this flag, which was, that flew over the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. So our hope is, is that what we can do is put it on the flagpole uh, down at the adult uh, school, at the Civic Center, which holds the adult school. So that that was a nice that was a nice little surprise. Very happy, very happy with uh, with us um, that uh, that we gave them that proclamation. But they're two very generous uh, volunteer organizations. So it was an absolute privilege to be there. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Finance and Borough Clerk Ms. Bailey. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, from the Finance Department, uh, the administration is continuing to work with the department head from the 2018 budget. And Mr. Cody and Mr. Burnett have also been working with Bob Vogel, the borough engineer, and other department heads on revising the five-year capital plan. And the goal is to follow the same schedule mm -hmm. as last year with the initial presentation in <coughs> and then introduction of appropriation ordinances for the road work to immediately follow. So this will allow for the roads to be packaged, which makes the projects easier to manage and hopefully reduces the costs. And the administration will be coming to the council later in the year with a list of capital ordinances that have been completed and that should be canceled. This is done annually so the funds can be brought back to the capital improvement fund and then appropriated to other projects. Thank you. 
Thank you. Utilities, Mr. Walkowitz. Thank you, Mayor. From the Water Department, let me remind you all that hydrant flushing program is still going on. So if at any point you find that your water is cloudy or isn't operating as usual, before you make that phone call, please give it a few minutes. It may well be the result of some flushing going on near your home. The, uh, we had a couple of problems that were caused by outside agencies that the Water Department addressed very quickly. One had to do with PSC and G, and uh, during some night work, they managed to cause a few repairs to have to be done by our Water Department. And we also had a leaky fire hydrant on Shunpike Road that was damaged due to the unauthorized use by an outside contractor. I didn't ask the question as to who pays, but I hope the perpetrators do in these cases. Um, <laughs> we're also continuing to put in the uh, meter, the new meters, and we're installing radio transmitters for remote water meter reading and outside registers. This is an exciting project. We've talked about it often, and it's very much in gear. From the electric department, uh, very briefly, they have begun installation of transformers and meters at the KRE project. They removed an old pole at North Street sewer pump station. They've installed new ones on Greenwood Avenue. And they have done numerous street light repairs, I guess, in preparation for daylight savings time ending. So I have some other um, things to mention about the electric utility. Uh, I expect that a um, report that was prepared by our CFO, Jim Burnett, will be presented at a, me a council meeting sometime in November. But there were a couple of highlights of that report I thought I had to mention uh, sort of as a teaser to his, uh, to his upcoming presentation. First of all, the overall performance of the utility is very much in line with estimates, and, and that's a good thing. The cooler summer did result in lower revenue, but it was offset by lower electric costs. So the net result is that surplus generation is still very much on track. Okay. Yeah, you may resume. <laughs> Not a record, but very impressive. <laughs> Regarding the dividend, um, so far we've distributed over $600,000 to customers. And it's anticipated that over the 12-month period from the time it was initiated, we will reach our target of giving back $1.5 million. The dividend resulted in our electric utility rates dropping by over 7 percent, which is the largest rate drop in the state of New Jersey over the past year. By comparison, three of the four public utilities increased their rate during that time. So obviously we look very favorable. Um, the borough also, as you know, had established a needs-based rebate program where eligible residents could receive a one-time credit of $150 on their electric bill. Since the beginning of the year, the borough has received 361 applications, which resulted in the distribution of $54,150 in credit. The opportunity to claim a rebate still exists. So if you believe you're eligible, please contact us, and we will let you know it. And if indeed you are, it's a very easy $150. Thank you, Mayor. Just um, want to make a note that your operations part of your report on the electric utility was the last one supplied by Michael Piano. Yes. yes. It's, no, uh, yeah. You will be retiring. This indeed. And with that, on to health. Mr. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, at its October meeting, the Board of Health introduced an ordinance that will amend <clears throat> Chapter 218 of the Borough Code, which is nuisances. Uh, this includes ad addressing invasive species. A public hearing will be uh, held at the November 21st Board of Health meeting for anyone from the public who wishes to comment. Uh, the Madison Flu Clinic dates uh, at the Civic Center on Walnut Street are as follows. <coughs> Uh, tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 11, and then again on Wednesday, November 1st, 1st from 9 a.m. to 11. Uh, Foraging Positive Futures Through Positive Parenting is a program on parenting that features a certified parent coach who will provide interactive and engaging parenting workshops and courses. These courses will be held October 25th, November 1st, 8th, 15th, uh, and they'll be held at the Madison Y from 6.30 to 8. Please call Lindsay Pruitt to sign up at the Madison Health Department. 
Uh, check your Meds Day pharmacy program with the Massa and Madison Pharmacy. will be held on October 20th from 10 to 2 at the Madison Senior Center. I apologize. That has already happened. Um, Massa and uh, the Melrose County um, Prevention is, you know, they gave me that one, that also happened. The Mayor's Wellness cam Campaign, the Fitness Crawl, is scheduled from November 5th, so that's still going to happen, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. There are six different fitness studios that are participating. Uh, participants have the opportunity to experience a 20 to 25 minute workout at each facility, and sub subsequently, uh, this will help them to decide which is the best fit for their workout needs. And finally, the uh, department is doing its preliminary planning for the December's Rabies Clinic uh, dates to follow. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. And for community affairs, and if you have anything public safety. Uh, no, nothing from nothing for community affairs, although the way we're all sneezing and coughing, I think we should be the first ones in line for the flu vaccine. Um, from the police department, uh, very important, um, the public's help is needed to help solve a 1982 homicide that took place here in Madison. It soon will be 35 years since James Wesco was found murdered at the Madison train station. The passage of time has not lessened the desire of law enforcement authorities to solve this crime. To that end, Morris County Prosecutor Frederick Knapp and Madison Police Chief Darren Datchison are calling on the public to provide any assistance it can to solve Wesco's murder. On Thursday, October 21st, 1982, at about 3.14 a.m., a Madison police were alerted by a Conrail train employee reporting a person lying on the station's upper eastbound train platform. Upon the arrival of the police, a deceased male was found in the platform area. The male was later identified as James Wesco of New Providence. It was subsequently determined that he died as a result of a homicide. He had last been seen at the Park Tavern in Madison at about 12.30 and uh, on Lincoln Place at approximately 12.50. Um, Saturday pass marked the 35th anniversary of the homicide. Law enforcement remains committed to solving this case and providing answers regarding the death of this victim. Although this case is 35 years old, we are just as eager to solve this case as our predecessors were in 1982, Chief Tatchison said. We owe it to the victim and his family to continue the investigation and take a fresh look. If anyone has any information that they believe can aid investigators in this matter, they're asked to call Madison Police Sergeant Paul Kozakowski, um, the Morris County Prosecutor's Office Major Crimes Unit, or Crime Stoppers at 973 COP Call. Um, Madison officers have received, uh, with the ongoing opiate epidemic, Madison officers will be trained on the recent Morris County opiate initiative called Narcon 2.0. This program requires officers to request a peer recovery specialist to respond to an emergency room after a life-saving Narcan is administered by officers. Prosecutor Frederick Knapp said the goal is for the recovery specialist to convince the individual to undergo treatment which can break the cycle of addiction and very simply save lives. He also said this truly will provide people with a second chance at life. In an effort to combat this deadly cycle and steer those patients to treatment, the new Narcan 2.0 partnership has formed among the Morris County Prosecutor's Office, St. Clair's Health, Atlantic Health System, the County of Morris, the nonprofit Morris Cares, and municipal law enforcement agencies. Peer recovery specialists will be dispatched from CARES to St. Clair's Health and Atlantic Health Systems Hospitals. The Morris County uh, Prosecutor's Office will devote $10,000 of drug forfeiture money to train the recovery specialists. Melody Runyon, Associate Director for Morris County Prevention is Key, said, Evidence indicates that administering a drug like Narcan to an individual who suffers an opiate overdose is a critical step needed to save a life. However, by itself, it is not nearly enough to accomplish the goal of the connecting the drug abuser with needed treatment or recovery support. And although, you know, we think we here in Madison are sometimes immune to problems like this. We are not. 
Um, from the fire department. For tonight's council meeting, during the month of September, the fire department responded to 21 general alarms, 21 still alarms, 23 investigations, 50 EMS calls for a total of 114 calls. 35 fire prevention inspections were made. 13 resale smoke CO inspections were made. This is interesting. On October 4th and 5th, the fire department conducted a 16-hour trench rescue class, which was held at the DPW's yard on John Avenue. A total of 23 Madison, Cedar Knolls, and Whippany firefighters trained together in removing buried victims from a trench. A special thanks goes to our DPW for digging an eight foot deep, four foot wide by 30 foot long trench for the fire department to train in. Wonder who was in the trench. Residents are reminded that October is Fire Prevention Month. The Madison Fire Prevention Bureau will be visiting all elementary, middle, and pre-K schools with fire prevention programs geared for each age group. Our seniors will be presented with safety programs as well. And finally, Madison volunteer fighter Craig Thomas will be leaving us effective October 25th. Craig is taking a career firefighting position with Loudoun County Fire and Rescue in Virginia. Craig has been a volunteer member of the fire department since March of 2015. We thank him for his dedicated service to Madison and wish him well in his new career with Loudoun County Fire and Rescue. That's all. Thank you. Any communications and petitions? None received, Mayor. All right, since we have no agenda discussions, since we pulled the um, uh, borough owned tree during construction and put that to the next meeting, and there are no ordinances for hearing, we'll combine the two um, invitations for discussion. So now, anyone in the public wish to comment on anything, please step forward, state your name, your address, and keep your comments to three minutes or less. Good evening, Council Mayor. My name is Jesse Esposito, Community Place in Madison. Um, one, I want to thank you um, for getting done as much as we have gotten done over on Community, which I am grateful for, uh, that the housing has transferred the street over to the borough. Um, <coughs> One of the things I'd also like to comment on it was revealed to me that there was um, an issue about signage because they wanted to wait until next year when the street was being done. I would like to please suggest that signage go up now <laughs> as soon as possible. We did do the yellow on the driveways. That, that, was, that was all that's done. Um, and really, we need to start posting the signage up so these people that are parking there can get the idea that this is not just a dump street to dump their cars on, uh, including the businesses, including the housing, and uh, whatnot. Um, the guy at uh, uh, Adrian Taylor, who owns 20 Cook, Avenue um, has rented his home to uh, college boys from Fairleigh Dickinson. I am not complaining about them. The kids are very respectful and very good and very kind to everyone. So they're not an issue, but they do have a lot of cars now. There are six to seven cars parked every day on community for that house. So it, it's okay. I'm not complaining as long as they park on that side and don't worry about the rest of it. But I've had Cindy from the parking authority who keeps removing the sign and removing my cone because I did put a cone in front of my house um, because when my family comes to visit, I do want them to be able to So with that said, thank you again for having the street done getting the street back. Now if we can start posting signs, and I, I am truly requesting that the, I guess it's the north side or the west side of the street, um, 
be a continuation of no parking as it is on the first half of the community place. From Park to Cook is no parking on that side of the street. I would, I am requesting and asking please make it no parking on that side of the street a continuation. Thank you for listening, thank you for having me, and thank you all for everything you've done so far. Thank you, Jesse. Just a, an update. Um, as you can imagine, in the government world, things don't go as quickly as we'd like. So the uh, Housing Authority did pass the uh, resolution to transfer that, but that is one step. So we, we have, because it's included in their lot, so we, we have to do a, a subdivision has to go through to separate the street from their lot. So that's going to be step two. And then once that's uh, done, then, uh, you know, and, and all that, the, that, that's now underway, I think, with the meets and bounds have been done, and so we're moving forward with getting that to the uh, zoning or planning board to take care of, and then once it's official, then it is a borough street, and then it'll be subject to the borough uh, parking regulations, we'll be able to enforce it. So okay. it's, um, we, we have, even, even though it's not officially a borough street, you probably noticed that it has become part of the routine of street sweeping when they do uh, cook and the other. street sweeping, they, they've actually put, you know, fix the potholes and fix the manhole. So that's okay. all a plus and that's all going very well. I'm grateful for that. Um, the only thing I, I just want to reiterate to you, Mayor and, and Council, is the fact that um, when both sides of that street, the people are parked on both sides of that street, emergency vehicles and not get down. Um, I've notified housing several times now over the past month that their um, garbage container trash bin is broken, been on community street since for a month now, and I, I did request the repair and move back into the fenced in area where the containment area where it belongs, uh, although I have not been successful with that. And I have to, I'm sorry, because we're, we're past your three minutes, so. Okay. Well, you saw, sorry. yeah, what, what, what so, you know, yeah. Um, you know, when both sides of the street are full, it's just impossible to get emergency vehicles, and I don't want to take any chances with people yeah. in the house and whatnot. So in, in anticipation of the borough taking over the street, we'll have um, our Lieutenant Longo and Fire Department look at if, if we need to restrict parking on one side like it's done. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to be heard, please step forward. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. Introduction mm -hmm. ordinance with a clerk, please read the statement. The um, ordinance scheduled for first reading has a hearing date set for November the 13th, 2017. It will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up ordinance 44-2017 for first reading. I ask the borough clerk to read said ordinance by title. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $41,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for radios for the fire department. I move ordinance 44-2017. Second. Any council discussion? We'll call a vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Okay, consent agenda resolutions. Will the clerk please read the statement? Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring <coughs> will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be <coughs> reflected in full in the minutes. Mayor, I move consent agenda resolutions are 269 2017 to resolution 277-2017. Second. Any discussion or any that need to be pulled? We'll call a vote. Ms. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Burr? Yes. There is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. There's cap, uh, current fund, $5,119,912.79. General capital fund, $1,760.31. Electric operating fund, $127,006.37. Water operating fund, $43,277.34. Water capital fund six hundred and eleven dollars forty-five cents, and the trust thirteen thousand two hundred and ninety-nine dollars seventy-eight cents. 
Total is five million three hundred and five thousand eight hundred and sixty eight dollars and four cents. Mayor, I move approval of the vouchers. Second. Discussion. Roll we'll call vote. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. There is no new business. I move we adjourn. We get a uh, council picture by the. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. All right. We're going to finish the presentation. All right. Got a group photo. <laughs> Thank you.